Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Kian and here is the Kimo. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to use Figma to prototype a functional calculator. It might sound so easy, but in past it was a nightmare to create such a complex logics and functionalities. But now it's possible, thanks to the new features of the Figma, such as the variables, expressions, and of course the conditionals. I'm going to start this video by creating the user interface of the calculator, and then I'm going to define some variables which I'm going to use later on to prototype uh, my user interface and at the end I'm going to focus on the prototype and creating the functionalities and logics. So bear with me until the end of this video. I'm pretty sure you're gonna learn a lot about these new features. But before going further, if you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video and check out the other videos as well. Now without further ado, let's get us started. So let's start by creating and designing the user interface of the calculator. I'm gonna make a frame inside the canvas by clicking on the short key F and selecting one preset uh, from the uh, preset panel. iPhone 14 in this case is going to be my choice. And then I'm renaming the frame that we made to the demo. The very first user interface element that I'm gonna add to my frame is going to be the number buttons. I'm gonna use the number buttons to create the uh, number path for my calculator, but I'm not gonna design this button from scratch. I already made one for my previous video uh, in which I made dial pad. And if you had no chance to watch that video, I really recommend you to do so by clicking on the banner on top. Now I'm gonna open the asset panel and drag and drop one of the dial buttons component inside my canvas. Uh, and use this button to create the uh, number pad for the calculator. Now that my number pad is ready, I'm gonna add the operational buttons to my calculator. I'm gonna duplicate uh, another new instance from the uh, component that we have in the canvas, uh, which is the button, and then add my operational uh, button like uh, plus, and then minus, and the rest of the buttons. Now I'm gonna add two text fields into the frame. One to display the result of the operations and one to display what is the number that the user entered to the calculator. I'm gonna pick the text tool and write down a placeholder. This is going to be basically the number, uh, the, the text field that is going to show the a result of operation and the second one is going to be the one that shows what is the entry number from user side so i'm going to maybe reduce the size of the second one a bit to make it distinguishable from the first one and then i will select both of them and apply the auto layout on it by uh, clicking on shift a combination key and then maybe we can just uh, increase the gap between these two numbers to 24 pixel and of course i'm gonna uh, resize the whole frame horizontally to align with the rest of the elements in the scene. And then I will select both a layer or the child layer of this auto layered frame and then change the horizontal resizing behavior to fill the container. Now we are ready to go for the next step. I need to create three different variables. To create the variables, I need to click somewhere empty in the canvas and then I will see this local variables from the design panel. I can open the variables panel by clicking on the icon next to it. And then of course I can create the new variables by clicking on this button here. And uh, the first step I need to kind of define which type of variables I'm going to have. In this case, uh, I'm gonna select the number and then I might create two more variables at the beginning. Now I'm gonna rename them to something more proper based on my use. So the first one is going to be the number that, uh, or, or the variable that is going to save the user input. So I just rename it to user input. And then second one is going to be the number or, or the variable that is going to show the, the result of overall operations. So I just uh, name it display which I'm going to connect it to display a text field in my canvas. The initial value for all of them is going to be zero. And now I can start prototyping. In the very first step, I'm gonna connect these two text fields to the uh, proper variables that we made in the previous step. I'm gonna select the first one, and then from here in the text panel, I see this uh, new indicator, which is a new feature in the Figma. And when I hover on it, I will see this tooltip, which says apply the variable. I click on it and then find the proper variable. In this case, it's going to be the display. Of course, when you apply uh, this variable, you will see that uh, the 
value is going to be zero here, uh, which basically is the initial value that we set for the variable that we made. And then I'm gonna select the next uh, field, next, uh, sorry, text field, and then do the same process. This time I'm going to uh, select the user input variable. Now it's time to work on the logic and functionality of the number button in the number pad. I'm gonna select the number one or the first button, and then I go to the prototype panel and create a new interaction by clicking on this plus button. Uh, the trigger type is going to be on tap because I want this transition happen when I click on this button. And in transition type, I would set it on the set variable. This is also a new feature from Figma. Now it's time to write our expression. When the user click on this button, the user input variable need to change to user input variable multiple uh, 10 plus the value of the bottom, which is in this case one. We just multiple in 10 because we want to add one to the new digit and we don't want to basically increase the user input, uh, the value in the user input uh, variable uh, by one. We want to add a new digit to it. So this is basically doing that logic. Now, if I run the preview, you will see that the, when I click on the one, uh, this uh, text field is going to show how many uh, time I click on this and uh, it will show the proper number. Basically, the logic is working good. I need to follow uh, the same process for the next button. Let's uh, do it once more on the second one, which is going to be the uh, two, number two. So I click in the on the plus button, the trigger type on tab, and then a set variable is going to be the type of the uh, interaction. I'm going to uh, write down expression like this, that the user input variable need to change to the user input variable, uh, multiple uh, 10 and plus two this time because the value of the um, this button is two. Now I run the preview again, we will see that the second button is also working well. I'm gonna follow uh, the same process for the rest of the uh, button and I will be back again. So as you can see, I kind of finished the prototyping of uh, all the buttons here, the number of buttons, and they're working well. Just the last button, which is going to be the zero, has a bit more complex uh, logic, which means when uh, there is no basically value and I click on the zero, I don't want to add zero as a digit to this uh, number. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the conditional uh, uh, prototyping. I'm going to click or select the zero button and from the prototyping, uh, click on the plus uh, icon here, the trigger type on tap again, but this time instead of set variable, I'm going to say, uh, use the conditional. Now I can write more complex logic. In this case, I want to say if the user input is not zero, then at the action, the action would be set variable. So basically we can write the expression inside the if, which means now we can write down more logical uh, stuff. So now I'm going to repeat the same process. So if the user input is not equal with zero, then do this uh, process, which is the user input variable uh, should be equal to user input variable uh, multiple 10 plus zero. For now, I leave the else uh, condition uh, empty and run the preview again to see if now it's working the way that I want. So when I click on the zero, at the beginning, nothing happens. But when there is a number there, and then I click on the zero, you see that it will add it as a new digit. So this is what exactly I wanted to. Now it's time to work on the functionality of the operational button. Let's start by the add button. I'm selecting the uh, add button and then add an interaction to it uh, by clicking on the plus button here from prototype panel. And then uh, the interaction type is going to be a set variable. I'm gonna write an expression here. I want that the display uh, variable change to display uh, variable plus uh, user input. 
but after this I would like to add another expression to the same interaction in which I would like to set the user input uh, value or variable to the zero. So let's, per let's run the prototype and see uh, if the, uh, the button is working properly or not. Now I can use the same logic to create uh, the rest of the functionality. So for example, here for the minus button, I'm going to add a new interaction and then set a variable again, the, the basically the, the display uh, variable should equal, should be equal with the display and subtraction, uh, the user input. And I will add a, again, a new uh, set of variables and uh, I will change the user input to zero. Now let's give it a try again and see uh, if the minus button or subtraction is working. Uh, I'm going to write 12 plus, for example, 12, uh, which is going to be equal to 24. And then I'm gonna uh, subtract uh, maybe 12 from it. And then in the next step four, as you can see, mathematically it worked well. The story is a slightly different for this two last button, operational button, basically the multiplication and dividing button. And the reason is that uh, because we start with the zero button for the user entry. And uh, if we want to follow the same logic that we did for the uh, plus and minus, uh, we will always see the zero here because zero multiply any button, uh, any number would be a zero. Uh, to avoid this happening, I need to write down a bit uh, more complex uh, logic. So let's start uh, with the multiplying uh, button. Uh, I create the interaction and this time I want to use the conditional. Uh, I want to say if the uh, display button is not equal to zero, then I would like to do the same uh, kind of logic that we had for the rest of the buttons. So I want that the display uh, button uh, uh, change to display button, uh, this time uh, multipl multiplying by user input. And of course, I would like to create again uh, another uh, expression that says the user input should be equal to zero. Otherwise, so if the display number is equal to zero, then in that case, I would like to write down again an expression that in that case, the display variable should show the user input. I'm not sure if it's going to work or not, but let's give it a try. Let's uh, run the preview. And now two multiply two. I forgot to do something. Uh, let's go back to the prototyping panel. For the else option, I didn't set the user input to zero again. So. Uh, that's the part that I forgot. So the user input should be zero. Now again, let's restart the preview and then to multiply two, multiply uh, four, basically it's going to be 16. I need to use the similar uh, logic for the dividing button. So again, a uh, new interaction, this, this time conditional. And if the display button, uh, the display variable is not equal to a zero, in that case, I would like to uh, basically set the display variable to display, and this time divide by the user input. And the new expression, which says that the the user input should be equal to zero. And here I would write down the same expression again, uh, which says that the display uh, variable should be equal with the user input. And of course, the user input should uh, be equal to zero after this operation.
So that was everything that I wanted to share in this video with you. I hope you like it and you learned something new. If it was so, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video and leave a comment for me. Let's learn together and see you in the next video. Thank you.